So let's look at converting vulgar fractions to decimals. Before I do anything with this, a very quick reminder about place value, because it is important. Um, so if I had the number 1, 2, 3, point four, five, six, working to the left of the decimal point, we have units, tens and hundreds. Working to the right of the decimal point, which is where the core of our work is, the first digit is tenths, then one hundredths and thousandths. So with that in mind, let's have a look at some nice simple examples of converting fractions to decimals. Let's suppose I had seven tenths. Well, the clue is in the way that I'm saying it. So seven over 10. When we come to write this as a decimal number, then seven is going to be the key digit and we place it in the tenths column. That's why I just referred to the place value system. So quite simply, this is going to be the same as naught point. And this number is going to go in the tenths column. So this is tenths. Let's pick off a different example. 81 over 100. So same scenario. We're looking at hundreds. So we're going to be working on that column is where our smallest digit is going to go. So 81, the smallest digit here, the, the one on the right, is going to go in the hundreds column. So this is 0 0.81. Pick off a different one. Um, just inventing numbers, suppose I had 123 over 1000. Then the digit that's furthest to the right, the three, is going to go in the column of thousandths. So zero point, and that three needs to go in that third column. One, two, three. So this one sits in the thousandth column. OK, so that's a starting point. Once in a blue moon, you may get a very simple, straightforward question that has a 10 or a 100 or a 1,000 or something similar on the bottom. They're the easiest ones we're going to get. So the reality is many of our fractions won't have a 10, 100 or a 1,000 on the bottom, but they could have a variation which is easily changed. For example, we may have the number two fifths. So we haven't got a 10 here or a hundred, so it doesn't immediately drop into this system, but it doesn't take Einstein to work out that if we multiply that by two, then we get 10. So if we multiply the top by two and the bottom by two, we will have four tenths. So these two numbers are basically the same. And all I've done is multiply the 5 by 2 to get 10, 2 by 2 to get 4. And at this point, we can use this system. So this is 0 0.4. The 4 goes in the tenths column. Let's pick off a different one. It could be 3 over 50. So once again, this doesn't work with 10, 100, 1000, but 2 times 50 is 100. So multiply this by 2 will give us 100. Multiply this by 2 will give us 6. So if we rewrite this one, this is going to appear in the hundredths column. And we'll look like that. And we could carry on. Let's pick a, a very slightly different one. Uh, 7 over 250, so 7 250ths. Again, 
this isn't falling into 10, 100, 1000, but four 250s makes 1000. So if we multiply the top by 4 and the bottom by 4, we have 28 over 1000. And the smallest digit here, the one that is furthest to the right, will go in the thousandth column. So a quick reminder, this is your tenths column, this is your hundredths column, this is your thousandths column. Okay, so they're all nice and easy, very straightforward. Let's move on to the final method that I'm going to show you for converting fractions to decimals. So I'm going to take you all the way back to junior school and this is where you should have met how to do longhand proper division. So uh, let's suppose we have a number like 40 divided by 2. What this is asking us is how many times does 2 go into 40? Well, we know the answer to that is 20, but that's not the point. If I gave you a fraction which was, say, 5 eighths, and I asked you to convert this into um, a decimal number, then we've got a little bit more work to do. It's not difficult, but we just need a little bit more work. So what we're going to do is we're going to say how many times does 8 go into 5? And we're going to do this manually, as you should have been taught many years ago in school. OK, so 8, how many times does 8 go into 5? Well, the answer is none. 8 doesn't go into 5. We know this is going to be less than 1, so here's a decimal point. And these numbers, it will help you greatly if you line them up, so you keep them in columns. So all we can do here is we can add as many zeros as we need, because it doesn't change 5, it's 5.000. And we may or may not use them all. So let's make a start. 8 into 5 doesn't go. It won't go, so it's naught. And then this 5 moves over. How many times does 8 go into 50? So 6 eights make 48. So 8 into 50, there are 6 of them. 6 eighths are 48, 48 and 50, that leaves us a difference of 2. So we write the bit that we carry over there. So then we ask, how many times does 8 go into 20? And it goes 2, twice. And 2 eighths are 16. And we start with 20, so the difference there is 4. How many times does 8 go into 40? The answer is 5. And it goes completely. 5 eighths make 40. So we're not going to need this. And this is our answer. 5 eighths is 0.625 as a decimal. OK. So let me do another one of those. Let's pick off a different fraction. So let's say uh, six sevenths. So we're going to ask the question, how many times does seven go into six? So some people call this a bus stop for some reason. So how many times does 7 go into 6? And here, I know 7 doesn't go into 6, it's less than 1. We're just going to have a string of zeros. We may or may not use them. Line up your columns. 
so seven into six doesn't go so the six comes over how many times does seven go into sixty well eight sevens make fifty six so our first number is eight eight sevens make fifty six and that leaves us four left over okay so how many times does seven go into forty five sevens are thirty five so five goes there five sevens are thirty five 35 and 40, the difference is 5. How many times does 7 go into 50? 7 sevens make 49, so it's 7 of them, and it makes 49, and the remainder is 1. And I could carry on doing this, but this is going to be accurate enough for anything that we do. How many times does 7 go into 6? And the answer is 0.857. Don't need to worry about this. So six sevenths is the same as 0.857. Okay, so at that point, choose any appropriate method that you think will work for you and work your way through the questions on the handout.